And breaking news right now, a woman in her 20s has serious injuries after being stabbed multiple times in the city's east end. This happened about half an hour ago near Kingston Road and Danforth Avenue. We can tell you police just uh, said that one person is now in custody. So far, no charges have been laid. We have a camera en route, and we're going to bring you updates to this story as they become available to us. Now, to other news that we're following this hour, a man rushed to hospital here in Toronto after a shooting in Brampton. Police now confirming the victim is in life-threatening condition. Peel police have taped off two areas in their investigation, including this one here. This is a live look at Queen and West Drive. This is near the 410. The second scene is about a kilometer away, and that's where we find our Tammy Sutherland, that second scene at Clark Boulevard and Hart Lake Road. Tammy, what can you tell us? Well, Melanie, we can tell you that police so far have not confirmed exactly which of the two scenes is the location where the shooting itself happened. But if you take a look here, police have blocked off this entire intersection at Clark and Hartley Boulevard. As well, it appears that shell casings are here on the ground. They're being covered up by two police hats right now being marked off as evidence. There's also shattered glass on the ground here as well. Now, the victim was rushed to hospital from that second scene at the plaza just down the street. Police have now released a suspect description, although it is vague. They say they are looking for a male black with a thin build wearing a white tracksuit seen fleeing in a Nissan. Still, we don't know from what intersection itself he was seen fleeing from, but anyone with information being asked to contact police. And right now for the investigation, for commuters especially here in the area, Clark Boulevard remains closed off between Rutherford and West Drive for the investigation. No word on how long this closure will be here. Melanie, I'll send it back to you for now. Tammy Sutherland, thank you for that. We'll check in with you in a few minutes' time for more on this investigation. To other news now, it's week two of the college faculty strike coming to a close with no end in sight. And no talks have been scheduled between the union and the college employer council. Education Minister Deb Matthews says using legislature to get students back to the school, back into school rather, is now off the table. We do have the tool of legislating back, but that would be a very last resort tool. But we need, we need to get those two parties talking. So I'm very concerned that uh, students are losing uh, their, um, potentially losing their semester. Um, and the government seems to be fine just to let everything go along. If I was the Premier, I'd be calling on both sides to get back to the table. And this was the scene yesterday as dozens of teachers and staff gathered outside the Ministry of Advanced Education calling for Matthews to summon the employer council back to the table. More than 12,000 faculty at all 24 public colleges across the province walked off the job last Monday. The Ontario government says it will provide $1 million to help in the humanitarian assistance for Myanmar's Rohingya. The violence there has sent more than 600,000 Rohingya Muslims fleeing from Myanmar to Bangladesh. The Red Cross there struggling to deal with the sheer number of people. Ottawa has now pledged $25 million in aid. The U.S. has gone as far as saying ethnic cleansing is happening to the Rohingya Muslims. The death toll now at 23, but may rise after an explosion at a factory, fireworks factory in Indonesia. Thick smoke and flames shooting from this factory near the capital of Jakarta. At least three explosions were heard. More than 100 people were believed to be working inside. There's no word on exactly what started this fire. This factory has only been open for two months.